Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 630. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm David Old, and it is Thursday morning, the 12th of November, here in sunny Sydney, Australia. So for people who are new to the audience, every once in a while I reach out to people around the world. Uh, we have David Old, we have Peter Old, we have uh, Jeff, we have a whole bunch of people that uh, help us gather information about what's happening in the Anglican community around the world. And we have a decision, actually an opinion from a, the, the appellate's in Australia, and I thought we'd talk uh, with you, David, about that because you've been following the story, you've been in the story yeah. now for uh, many years. Uh, the question was whether or not the liturgy of the Anglican Church should allow same sex marriage. They sent out a big questionnaire asking everybody, and the responses, well, <laughs> don't seem to be the answer they were looking for. Well, uh, <laughs> so, Kevin, you'll remember last year um, that the Diocese of Wangaratta here in Australia passed yes. a bill for a liturgy, a very clever, tightly defined liturgy for the blessing of individuals who had been in a marriage, uh, and that marriage was a state marriage like done by a civil celebrant could they then come uh, and it was specifically designed of course uh, for same-sex couples and Wangaratta passed that and uh, everybody went and they did it despite the bishop having promised to all the other bishops in an agreement they all made not uh, you know we wouldn't move forward but he said oh I got a legal advice and it wasn't contrary to that you know all that kind of stuff you, you're all used to it sure. all you old ex this, this is um, tech 101 <laughs> and and so um the primer and others went hang on just just everybody just slow down and because it was still fairly gentlemanly everybody did uh, and then there were a number of questions asked to what we have which is called the appellate tribunal which is if you like it's like a court of appeal but not uh in the anglican church of australia essentially it functions like the supreme court of the united states functions in that it's it, it, um, it hears questions about how certain laws or whatever they may be, uh, whether they're constitutional. Mm -hmm. And the questions for the appellate tribunal are, are these things according to or contrary to the constitution of the Anglican Church of Australia? What's really important to understand is that it offers opinions. So this is not like a final ruling. This is not like the tribunal has spoken this is what it must be. It, it is It is an opinion offering body. However, that hasn't stopped liberals in the past using it as a means to circumvent legislation. So the most famous example of that would be many years ago where it was quite clear they could not persuade the General Synod to allow women to be consecrated as bishops. So instead they asked a opinion question of the appellate tribunal on the matter and the appellate tribunal came back and said sure why not we see no problem uh also probably worth observing that like uh the um this might be a, a surprise to your american viewers like the supreme court is uh, a political beast um this is a very political thing and so we oh, we very deliberately look at the political makeup you have original liturgist and then you have living yeah. liturgist <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you kind of get that kind of way. You got the originalists, and there's a bit of that going on in this in this whole in this whole uh, ruling uh, here. And there's those people who are looking to constrain, or oh, we'll get to the discussion about. But yeah, the same sort of things that go on. But that's that's the basic background. And the question was asked essentially: uh, one was this liturgy, and an, uh, another one like it from Newcastle, but that one lapsed under their legislation, so that was out of it. Were they according to the Anglican Church of Australia's constitution? And a second question was asked about the Newcastle diocese who had uh, very prudently also put with their liturgy bill another um, piece of legislation that said um, essentially clergy taking part in this, either being themselves married and blessed or participating by overseeing the blessing are somehow removed ring fenced from national uh, um, disciplinary procedures and could the could could they actually do that? Can you just remove yourself from the potential of a of a of a national disciplinary thing? Uh, on both those questions, the appellate tribunal came back with a five to one majority along what we would have expected theological lines. 
um, and they said, sure, why not? The, there's clearly no problem uh, there. That dropped at four o'clock in the afternoon uh, yesterday uh, here, local time. That's just over 12, uh, maybe 17, 18 hours ago. And I, I think it's probably worth saying, Kevin, it is the the most monumental thing that's happened so far in our ongoing growing conflict over this very vexed question of sexual ethics and behavior and what the church can or cannot bless. And it has left many people, I want to put this charitably, struggling to understand how the tribunal came to the opinion that they came to. Well, if I understand correctly, they put out a questionnaire uh, months back. And people responded to that questionnaire. And yeah. from the Australians that I know in leadership, uh, it would at least be 60-40, not uh, 5 to 1. So they did, as, as they always do, they invited submissions from interested parties. And so yeah. what's the legal equivalent? I think, like, the obviously the parties themselves mm -hmm. uh, will make submissions. And then you get all the amicus equivalent, right? Everyone makes their submissions and says, here's what we think, here's what we want to consider. And big, hefty, like, you know, the Diocese of Sydney, as could be expected, and GAFCON and others uh, all wrote in, and the, and the LGBTQ for, for Anglican thing, they all write in. The vast majority of those submissions uh, said, you've got to say no. This is, and very detailed, very, very well thought through um, uh, submissions, lining out all sorts of things. And they're all available to see now on the Appellate Tribunal website. But then they went through a second process, which they're obliged to do. They're, they're, a, they're a legal body. They're meant to come to a legal decision. So, so um, if they have a matter of theology or doctrine, then they have to refer that externally out of the tribunal. And they have to ask that question of two bodies. The first is the House of Bishops which is like your House of Bishops. The second is another elected body, which is called the Board of Assessors, which the General Synod also um, elects. And the Board of Assessors is a robustly orthodox conservative board. And so they asked four questions, and I, I blogged on this about a month ago. And when you see the questions, and they're now all available on the website, you realize that what they're actually trying to do is try and constrain, well, one would surmise this, you, you never know what's inside someone's brain, but it, they look like questions that are trying to constrain the broad categories in the in the Constitution. So, for example, if I can just read to you from the um, from the Constitution of the Anglican Church of Australia, um, the church receives all the canonical scriptures of the Old and New Testaments as being the ultimate rule and standard of faith given by inspiration of God and containing all things necessary for salvation. The questions asked uh, clearly were seeking to say, what is the scope of that statement? All things necessary for salvation, right? And is, is marriage or sexual activity within that constraint? And again, when it says part section three of the constitution, the church will ever obey the commands of Christ teaches doctrine, administrative sacraments, etc. What What is meant by, doctrine how do we know what do the articles say exactly they were very there were great lawyers questions they're kind of questions that you'd be proud of your lawyer asking in a courtroom do you know what i mean that's what you pay the lawyers for yeah, to ask those absolutely. really great questions yeah. questions where you you kind of know what's the answer i want what's the question mm -hmm. however the house of bishops and the board of assessors wrote some pretty full answers the house of bishops wrote a, a a fairly spog standard boilerplate answer, but robustly conservative. The Board of Assessors wrote a very full answer to the four questions asked of them. So, for example, the um, uh, the uh, the tribunal said, "Look, what's the situation when, just as an example, uh, a homosexual couple bring their child to be baptized? Like, do we do we withhold?" the blessing of the child i think that was even the language of the of the of the of the question you can see what they're doing right they're taking sure. the language and, and the board of assessors went 
Well, of course, you know, baptism is available to all. However, in the baptism service, as uh, as you very, very well know, the parents make certain promises about repenting and turning away from sin. And in answer to our previous question, we laid out in very great detail that the doctrine of the church uh, and this faith that was received encompasses within it by necessity, see our big, big answer, matters of sexual behavior and all these sorts of things. So actually in good conscience, you can't accept the statement of somebody at that who says i repent of sin when they're deliberately defying this thing that we defined earlier it was it's a really really good answer it needs to be read in in detail but basically it, it essentially went there is no justification for any sanctioning of endorsing same-sex activity by the way that we understand these statements in the constitution and and the scope of what they are so now the appellate tribunal has overwhelming submissions in detail saying say no and both the house of bishops and the board of assessors saying no this this is not going to fly by any straight and they've got the repeated position of the general synod including of course when the last general synod censured the scottish episcopal church uh, for yeah. actually sanctioning same-sex marriages they said it is contrary to the doctrine of christ and the teaching of the church mm -hmm. they said that remember what does the what does the what does the constitution of australia say the church will ever obey the commands of christ teach his doctrine yet five so of them Five of them went, it's fine, and actually it's okay under certain circumstances the diocese can exempt there. Now, the Newcastle thing is kind of almost by the by. It's it's the it's the what some people would think the convoluted way they came about their opinion um on on that that matters. Uh mixed into the into it was the ongoing question of whether Justice Croft, who was one of the members of the appellate tribunal, ought to be not recusing himself. Justice Croft is the Chancellor of the Diocese of Wangaratta, and although he um, he states quite clearly for the record that um, he has distanced himself from the whole process within Wangaratta, and although I hear nobody impugning his integrity, it, it still doesn't, how do they put it here in Australia, it still doesn't pass the pub test that the Chancellor of the Diocese in question ought to be one of the people on the tribunal. Having said that, um, may turn out to be that given the numbers there, it didn't make any difference anyway. Nevertheless, you know, that was a thing that hung over it as well. So here we are, this has dropped. Where do you go from here? Well, where do we go from here? Well, yeah. as we, as you and I are speaking uh, right now, the House of Bishops are meeting as they were scheduled to meet. And it's no surprise therefore that the tribunal decision dropped last night. Mm -hmm. uh, the House of Bishops are meeting today uh, and they will be discussing this. And then the, gen the, the standing committee of the General Synod uh, begins its meeting tomorrow and they're due to meet over the weekend. Now, um, I, I haven't spoken to any bishops in between the tribunal dropping the, the opinion and their meeting this morning. But knowing the House of Bishops in general and what concerns them, and knowing the conservatives kind of as, as a group, I would imagine that the prevailing message will be, especially from the conservatives, we get what the opinion is, but you, if you act now, it will be carnage. It will be carnage and so and i did this on a, i did a facebook live um video last night after it dropped just trying to walk through the basic premise um there now is kevin a real urgency at least i would say and i think many would agree with me and i hope people of integrity on all sides would say there is now a real urgency for general synod to actually meet of course we had a covid delay this last year we were going to meet uh in june there is now a real urgency for general synod to meet next year we're scheduled again at the start of june to meet and we need legis clear legislation on this matter to absolutely finalize uh this matter uh, and then i would say different sides need to decide if in integrity they can stay within the Anglican Church of Australia based on that meeting. So that's where um, I think guys like me would be hoping it would go some more restraint to be shown and probably will get it because a lot of the synods, the diocesan and synods have already had their synods and the time for legislating has passed. Yeah, and you've had victories in the synods. Uh... Well, yep. Yeah, so we've had a number of synods, diocesan synods hold back. 
-hmm. And also the general synod is getting more and more conservative. Yeah. So so that's looking that it's looking that way. And of course, like the same way that you guys, I hope, would consider things on a secular level, you know, really the the the, the law courts are there to sort out the law where the law is ambiguous and needs clarification. But the real solution is always you don't legislate in the courts. You legislate in the legislature, right? So uh, that hopefully... <laughs> For the last two years, we've we've done it here in America. We've well, I realize, and, the and, activist and, judges, and, and hasn't that worked really well for everyone getting on so well? Yeah, uh, yeah. no, yeah. Americans ought not to lecture any of us today on any process. At all. <laughs> <laughs> we love you all. We pray no, for you no. regularly, especially yes. at the moment. But no. No, but like normal procedures, that's what you would hope would happen, and that mm. was I hope people of integrity on all sides at this point would be going. Look, it clearly. We now need resolution on this. So I've got guys to me saying today, is this the end? I say, it's not the end. It's, it's another step along the way. Understand the process. But really what it does is it 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 um it it shows to us that the Anglican Church of Australia can no longer kick this can further down the road. Yeah. Uh, right. and the general synod, if you remember last year, um this sort of time last year, pre-COVID, we were talking about a a having a special session of general synod where we wouldn't legislate on this matter because it was all just too oh, difficult and contentious and oh, we can't do that. And, and the conservatives went, well, no. And if you persist in calling the special session, then we will get enough signatures to call our own special session. And that will involve legislating. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's where we're at. I mean, we could go through some of the detail of the, of the, of the opinion and show how they've contradicted the advice that they were given, but I I'm not sure like i think we've all seen it before right well no so, anytime so. there's there's a decision from the supreme court here in america we all gather around we can't wait because we know that they're liberals or they're conservatives and they're going to vote on those lines yeah. and then you're absolutely surprised wait yeah, yeah. A I, shocked, uh, shocked attack. I so, thought you were so conservative we, what are you doing not overturning this i thought you're liberal how are you not being an activist in this you know it, it's just yeah 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 so kevin i i i think it was very clear where where the majority on this tribunal were minded to go what, as soon as you saw the questions sure. sent out last month. Now, those were leaks, and I leaked them onto my my website. I actually had possession of the um, I actually had possession of the answers at that time as well. Mm -hmm. But I I just thought there would be no benefit in publicizing those. Let's let the tribunal have a a clean process. No harm in seeing the questions, but let's let the uh, tribunal have a clean process mm -hmm. uh, uh, there. Uh, people get upset when I leak things. Um, who would have thought? Um, but having seen the answers, I were, I said to myself and chatting to a couple of other people who I knew had seen the answers as well, I do remember saying, wow, it is going to be really hard for them to, to lawyer this one. Hmm. Um, but they lawyered it. Well, the, it, in journalism and in, in, in processing, this is called Tell Me the Question where yes. I am explaining you the question in hopes that you will get the point so you can answer it the way I want it yeah. answered. Well, and the so, Board of Assessors got the point, mm -hmm. but they didn't give them the answer they were looking for because it needs two to tango. Yes, it does. And so and so the, the, the appellate tribunal has decided maybe to lead without a dance partner. That's fine. Off mm -hmm. they go. All right. So this was inside baseball. Cricket. Yep. Whatever. You know, what do you... <laughs> <laughs> and oh, we were, uh, <laughs> cricket is our own cricket is just coming out of a cheating scandal as well so um so uh um, I thought of that when I said that, you know. cheated, but yes uh, <laughs> there's no there is no <laughs> illustration hey kevin while i've got you can i just say if you if your viewers are going to look at this whole thing then I, I really want to commend that they look at what is essentially the minority report the minority sure, opinion yeah. mm -hmm. also published on the appellate tribunal website which i'm sure you'll be linking to well um, i'm going to link to your site and i'm going to put the right. link to your your you. facebook Facebook live uh, chat in the show notes if you check that out yep. um, we're recording this and I'm on the wrong side so I'm going to edit where I'm on the other side uh, so enough. people are completely confused although you, you know I'm talking to the other side of the earth maybe that yes but you and I should why. be driving on the on the we should be driving on the correct side of the road <laughs> is right. that what you're saying <laughs> yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got the it. sun is setting here so uh, I'll let you go I'm Kevin Coulson and I'm David Old. And you've been watching episode 630 of Anglican 
Unscripted. <laughs>